Hi, let's look over um, how to solve um, percent change problems. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the problems right here in practice. So Rebecca has a $15 discount and a 20% off discount at Volks. So I'm reading this problem here. So her total purchases comes to $48, and that's before the discounts. The cashier is going to apply the $15 coupon first and then uses a 20% discount second. So how much does she pay after the discounts are taken off? So what we're going to do is we're going to first take the original money that she started with and we're going to subtract away the $15 coupon because that's what happened first. So money minus money equals money. So after she takes away the discount, she should have $33 that she still owes for the items that she bought. Now we're going to calculate the percent discount. To do that I'm going to use a proportion and I'm going to put 100% in the bottom left. So 100% is the total cost before the 20% off discount. So that would be now $33 because we already took off that first coupon. The 30, 20% I'm sorry is going to go up here in the top left because that's the discount. So remember the 20% is the discount. So whatever number I get over here will be the discount. Um, so let me find the scale factor. So I'm going to draw my arrows towards what I don't know. I put 33 in the calculator. I do 33 divided by 100, not 100%, I divide by 100, and that's going to get me 0.33 as my scale factor. Then I multiply the 20, not 20%, but just the number 20, by 0.33, and then the answer I get is 6.6. .6. So that means that the discount, the 20% discount, comes to $6.60. Now what do I do with a discount? Well, for a discount I always subtract. So I'm going to subtract that 20% discount from the new total, which is 33. So I do 33 minus the $6.60, and I get $26.40 as my final answer with all of the discounts taken. So now we're going to look at this problem here about a population change. And in this case, I'm actually not finding the total or the amount after the discount, but instead I'm finding the percent growth. That's a percent change. So to do that, the population in Markleville was 15,600 and 2,000. By 2015, the population grew to 22,000. So these numbers here, this 2,000 and the 2015, those aren't numbers that are going to go in proportion. They're just telling me the chronological order. They're telling me what must have come first. And the thing that comes first is my 100%. So two th the year 2000 comes before the year 2015. So that means the population in the year 2000 is the 100%. It's the original population. And the new population is how I'm going to figure out the percent change. So I'm going to put the new on top of the original. And then I'm going to find what percent that is. So I have a very simple calculator here. So what I'm going to do to find the scale factor is I'm going to do 100. I'm not going to use percent. I'm just going to do 100 divided by the 1,000, sorry, 15,600. That's where the arrow came from and I'm going to get a scale factor. And that scale factor is really small. And I can write, start writing that down, but I don't want to write the whole number down. So I'm just going to leave it in my calculator. I know that I multiply by the scale factor. So I'm going to hit times. So I didn't clear it out. I just hit times. And I'm going to multiply it by the numerator here. I'm going to multiply it by that number. So 2, 2, 1, 2, 3. And there you go. So my answer is about, about 141%. 141%. Oh, that's ugly. So that's the new, that means that the new population is 141% of the original. But to find the percent growth, I subtract. To define the percent change, we always subtract to find the change. So I'm going to do 141% minus 100%. And the change I get is, oof, 41% is the percent change. And that's a percent growth because the population went up.
So for this last one, I already have part of my proportion set up. Peter owns a bike store. He regularly charges $65 for a bike. That's the regular price. So I'm going to put that next to 100%. He has a sale and marks the bike down to $50. So the new price for the bike is $50. That almost looks like 50. So what is the percent discount? So this is, so we're going to find the same way. So find the scale factor and we're going to multiply by the scale factor. So I'm going this way, so that means that I'm going to put 100 in the calculator first, 100 divided by, where is the arrow coming from, 65, so there's my scale factor, 1 point, that's a really long number, see it's repeating, 1.538461, 538, like that. Okay, well I'm not going to write that whole thing down, I'm just going to leave it in the calculator, and I'm, I always multiply by the scale factor, so I'm going to hit times. And then I'm going to times by the numerator, 50. So I have about, about 77%. But that means that the percent of the price, so it's 77% of the original. But that's not the discount, that's what you pay. So to find the discount, to find that change, I need to subtract. So I would do 100 minus 77%. So I get the percent discount is 23%. So what that means is the original price was $65. So they applied, it was, the original price was $65, and they applied a 23% discount. So they took off $14.95. So if I do 65 minus 14.95, I get 50.05. Now remember, this, is, this isn't exactly 50, but remember that we rounded. So this ends up working out. So that's, that's how that works. So your answer is a 23% discount. And I got that by finding the percent and then subtracting it from 100. So uh, you can write down these steps as I describe them to you. If you look at this example here that's all written out, um, so to find the percent change, you would first set up a proportion, and I usually put 100% in the bottom left, and then I put the original on the bottom. I put the new, either the new percent or the new amount, on the numerator, and then I find use a scale factor to find the missing part of the proportion. When it, to figure out percent increase or decrease, then you always subtract either from 100 or use of 100 minus that number and that's going to find the change. So to find percent change you always subtract with 100. Okay well hopefully that helps you with percent change and percent discount and thanks for watching.